start our program. Organized by Bengal Aerological Society. We welcome you all. The program is NEPT, leading by experience. So we have a small program, small get together program. One small CMEs and followed by dinner. First, we will facilitate our ex presidents, Dr. Krishna Padhan sir and Dr. Sudhi Chakravarti sir. May I invite Dr. Krishna Padhan sir to the stage for the felicitation presentation? Uh, this program is supported by CIPLA. May I request Vice President of CIPLA, Mr. Olajit Chaudhary, to the stage and to facilitate, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I invite Dr. Sudhir Chakravarti, sir, to the stage. Sir is ex-president of Bengal Reserve Society. And I also like to invite NSM of CIPLA, Mr. Vijanda Solanki, to facilitate him. to Sipla and the organizers. I don't know if I deserve it or not. But anyway, uh, by honoring me, actually you are, I'm, you are honoring all of us and the people who worked so hard for the Bengali Urology Society. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. You know, we have a long gap regarding the programs because of COVID period. Now many companies are actively coming up with the many programs, and CIPLA has come up with this program. And now I invite CIPLA's uh, VP, Mr. Arjit Chaudhary, to the stage, because uh, he has helped us a lot with this program. Please, Dr. Ch Mr. Chaudhary. And I, may I invite Dr. Anjan Das, sir, to come to the stage to facilitate him. Ashun. Stage, Julius. Please come to the stage. This is on behalf of BUS. Um, Mr. Chaudhary, would you like to tell something? Uh, thank you very much. And it's uh, very honoring and uh, uh, a very humbling experience uh, from the Bengal Raja Society. I'll take about uh, three, four minutes to share a few notes that I thought is quite appropriate for the evening. Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, thank you to the society for supporting CIPLA urology for 20 years. In fact, uh, 2002 month of May was the time when uh, CIPLA launched uh, the first Amsolucin in India. And with that started the journey of urology. Uh, so we are exactly celebrating 20 years in this month. So it's, it's been a great journey for us and uh, couldn't have been better, uh, couldn't have been as much uh, without the support for all the urologists over the years. Well, I'll tell you a little a small story which might be of uh, relevance and interest to uh, the senior doctors here and uh, uh, an interesting story for the new urologists. Right, I, you know, I have, I come from a family of urologists. So, uh, my association 
with urology started in 1981, right? And that association started with the fact that for the first time, uh, there, was a, there were a set of instruments which, which came home, uh, which was like, uh, for, a, for a seven year old boy, there were like uh, phenomenal things, you know, whether it was the telescope or the light source or everything else was like absolutely phenomenal, you know, for, but I was clearly told that do not touch, right? They were expensive, they were imported, so it was, we were told, please do not touch, right? But every time it, they used to come out for some purpose, uh, I was there um, just looking at it with awe, what, what kind of phenomenal instruments they are. A few years later, uh, another big machine came home, which was the diathermy machine. And I was again very excited, another machine has come home. But I was given only the responsibility to uh, take it down. We were three steps, uh, you know, three floors, we used to say above the ground. So I was told that you can carry that machine down to the car uh, whenever I need it. And you have to bring it up uh, as I come back. Right? And for a 10 year old, by then I was 10. For a 10 year old carrying a 20 kg machine uh, every time down and up and three steps, three floors up were uh, a challenge. But then that was the only association uh, that I had uh, with those instruments and urology, right? Uh, so from 1981 where TURP started, uh, urology has moved a lot for, to laser, to robotics, uh, to, to many other things. It's been a great journey of urology over uh, the next uh, 40 years, right? Uh, 20 years was when the first Euro-specific medicine came. But before that, 20 years was uh, uh, history. So over 40 years, uh, this therapy has evolved itself to uh, one of the most sought after uh, specialties in India today and world over. The next journey of 20 years could be even more interesting and I'll and I'll share a few nuggets about what's happening worldwide uh, for the next 20 years there's cryogenics uh, there are wearables today there is um, uh, you know we are talking to an American company who have developed a, a wearable neuromodulator device uh, which can send uh, pulses uh, to the bladder uh, we are talking to another company who has who has developed a a PSA machine, a handheld PSA machine, which could do a PSA in 10 minutes in a doctor's clinic, right? So those are, and then there is, uh, uh, we, are, we are talking about alpha blockers, which are uh, in depot form. You know, if prostate cancer could be treated with a depot injection for three months, then why not alpha blockers for BPH? So those are the developments which are there for the next years to come, including one which is very recently we are looking at a new product of a lidocaine prelocaine spray, which is for the first time it will be in, in the country uh, for the treatment of uh, uh, premature ejaculation. So I will say, as we travel this journey uh, in the past and as we travel it forward, uh, we would like to partner the medical fraternity and look forward to that wonderful relationship that we have had over the years. And I and I and I and I'd love to see the next 20 years evolve uh, with the new young urologists in a very different way and partnering the industry uh, in an even better fashion. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity that you've given us, uh, given CIPLA to be associated with the Bengal Urologist Society for this meeting, and uh, I look forward to a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, um, our, our uh, secretary, Dr. Gopalakishan, is today busy with another academic program. You know that another academic program is going on from East John USI. So, uh, on behalf of him, I, I Dr. Sunil Chaudhary, uh, secretary elect, in, uh, invite you all to this program. I uh, like to invite Mr. S uh, Dr. Sanjay Das, Dr. P.K. Mishra, Dr. Devasis Banerjee, Dr. Tusar Kanti Mandal, and Dr. Sujit Sinha to the stage for the lamp lighting program. Dr. Sanjay Das sir, Dr. P.K. Misa sir, Dr. Devasis Banerjee sir, they are all senior members of BUS. Please come to the stage for the lamp lighting program.
Thanks to all the senior members of the U.S. Uh, today, uh, we have a short CME, but it is a very interesting one. And it is definitely beyond urology. Uh, I'd like to introduce Colonel Dr. Piranjan, Piranjan Nandi, urologist and neurologist from Command Hospital. He is the author of One for Joy, the book, which is very interesting. It is available on Amazon. It is a non-fiction type of book. And you should enjoy the, reading this book. He is going to deliver today's uh, CME, that is Couple Pause, a novel paradigm in andrology. I think there are many small kids <laughs> and young couples are there. So if you, if you feel uncomfortable, you can take a break, you can go uh, for some coffee or tea, but it is a very interesting topic. You can enjoy the topic also. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. F at the outset, I, I would like to thank Bengal Urological Society and CIPLA for giving me a platform to give a talk. And uh, as he said that I am a writer, I am fond of all this CP, couple pause. After a major CP, which is a COVID pandemic, CIPLA program given us a platform for CP. Couple pause, a novel paradigm in andrology. As you all know, menopause is a, it sets in around 45 to 55 years of age and there is a sudden change in the physical, sexual and mental health of a woman. And simultaneously in the male, there is a subtle change beyond 45, which brings about again in his physical, sexual, mental health. Irrespective of which partner presents as a primary client, we as a healthcare worker should take couple-oriented approach in order to provide the best treatment. So with this, I start my presentation. See, with the medical advancement, as we all know, the people are living well beyond 80, and which is becoming a more of a norm rather than an exception. Again, we all know sex and surgery has no expiry date or no shelf life. Sexual health and function are important determinants of a quality of life. It is in the earlier phase of life, it is for procreation, recreation, but towards the end, it is very important for relation, relaxation and rejuvenation. We in our country, in being Indians, we are very double standard. We are very shy to talk about sex. But at the same time, we are the most populous country in the world. So there are good novels and all, India grows at night. Change is inevitable, but choice is optional. And how we adapt to the change leads to all the success. So all the plights and predicaments of an aging couple, sexuality is often ignored. And the senior couples need to redefine, rediscover, reconsider new normal. This is a new normal sexuality. Today, after COVID pandemic, even we are used to everything called new normal. So this is the one. So we have to adapt to a variable, flexible approach to couple sexuality, which I will gradually cover. So how body and sexual norms evolve with age? The word menopause was way back in 1800s. So 19th century, the word menopause came into use. With that, a phase of life was invented. It conceived as a turning point in a woman's existence. It wasn't until 1940 when the first main menopause, male menopause word was used, published. And then the more serious scientific term came quite late. In 1990s, around that time, 1995, this word came as an andropause. Because in male, there is no sudden stoppage of hormones unlike females. So that's the reason it is andropause is slightly controversial, but again, it's still perfectly possible for a couple to have a satisfying sex life after menopause. Unfortunately, we always feel that that is the end of the world. M most of the people feel, but no, you must keep only the keystone is keep an eye on your health. Bit of history, Way in 1975, Roman Gary, a 
he was a French writer. He wrote a novel called Your Ticket is No Longer Valid. It dealt with the physical difficulties of a 60-year-old man having a passionate affair with a 30-year junior, his junior. Then in 1992, there was George Dibleg. He is a Belgian urologist. He wrote, Your Ticket is Still Valid. So he has done a lot of work on andropause. He has published two good books. One is called Ageless Man. It is written only in 2020, which deals with the problems of the aging man. And similarly, an ageless woman, which deals with the problems and prevention of aging women. They are very interesting book. If you get time, you can go through it. This is a paradigm change. This new paper, it came in 2018 in Italy, that couple pause. So as I started the talk, individually, any partner can present as a primary client, but as, as a doctor, as a urologist, as an andrologist, we should take the couple oriented approach. So couple pause, this word has come into existence, 2018 this paper was published. This is the landmark study. So menopause, 50% of postmenopausal women will have genetic urinary symptoms. This is mainly because of the loss of estrogen, that is vulvovaginal atrophy. This has got a couple of symptoms, ulcerations, itching, lack of lubrications, thinning of epithelium. Urinary symptoms like LERTS and overactive bladder, urinary incontinence sets in. They have a hypoactive sexual desire, that is loss of libido, and the sensation reduced due to decreased testosterone. This androgen deficiency in aging male, testosterone, as you all know, 25% is by ovary, 25% by adrenal, another 50% by the peripheral conversation from the precursors produced by ovaries and testes, uh, ovaries and adrenals. This causes certain symptoms in the decrease in desire, satisfaction, and they also have a depression. So menopausal have, uh, ladies often develop depression. And in postmenopausal, suspect androgen deficiency if the desire does not improve after six months of estrogen therapy. The diagnosis is challenging because uh, testosterone measurement assays are not widely available. And even the reference range are poorly developed, defined rather. However, in a females more than 50 years, if the testosterone is just as a guideline, less than 20 nanogram per deciliter. This DHEA is very costly and it is just only urologist interested for absolutely clinical research and all it is applicable, otherwise not required. Oral DHEA can be given 50 milligram each morning for two to three months. If after two to three months, free testosterone comes to around 1.8, 2.2, fair enough, discontinue DHEA. If not, you can increase the dose. Even DHEA, this non-orgasmic women, this orgasm in women is a very enigmatic topic. It has been studied and proved that only 33% of normal women have a orgasm following penovaginal intercourse. So it is, especially those non-orgasmic women often tend to give up sex as they approach menopause. Long period of abstinence, vaginal leads to vaginal atrophy, which again turns dyspareunia, is a vicious cycle. Then in certain cases of hypoactive sexual disorder, you, this buspiron has been tried and it is plus minus. Ospemimpin came in 2015, this uh, selective estrogen receptor modulator, rather 2019, and it is uh, used as a 60 milligram OD. The female sexual dysfunction is a multi-dimensional problem, biological, psych uh, psychological and interpersonal relationship. This, uh, with this, uh, with the uh, popularity of the PDE5, there was a lot of pressure on the industry, from the industry side for the ladies. So Fibonacin has been come into the market in 2000, uh, this uh, US approval was there in 2015. Only it is for the premenopausal. They have said 100 milligram HS, but again, it has got a lot of side effects. So despite being in the market, it is yet to pass the test of the time. Hormone replacement therapy, as we all know, if estrogen and progesterone in postmenopausal with intact uterus, estrogen alone in post hysterectomy women. Testosterone patch for some postmenopausal female with decreased desire and distress with no other identifiable cause, one can try. However, contraindications we all know. 
Tibolon is a good yeah, medicine, synthetic steroid, which decreases sex hormone binding globulin, reduces, it's thereby increasing the testosterone. It is a selective tissue estrogen re activity regulator. It improves the vasomotor symptoms, thereby this urogenital atrophy and sexual function in postmenopausal female. Improves vaginal blood flow. The dosage is 2.5 milligram daily. Significant benefit is seen within around four weeks. Maximum effect around 12 weeks. Lubrication and moisturization, this vagina can become narrow, so th that is, the reason they start avoiding sex and all, so adequate lubrication. And very recently, this clitoral vacuum suction vibrator has been used in certain countries and even in India it is available, but though in a grey market. So this, as I said, the young woman is a gift of nature, but an old woman is a work of art. Now coming to the andropause, which is again a there are various names for it, male menopause, male climacteric, late onset hypogonadism, Adam, Padam. But again, since there is no sudden stoppage, it is like subtle changes sets in. This paper was published by our year 2008. Again, there is an two extremes. Uh, certain persons feel absolutely ashamed to meet their partner because they feel there is a uh, loss of manhood. On the other hand, there are people who say that I am not 60 years old, I am just 16 with 44 years of experience. So it is just the attitude. So hormones do not decline because we age. We age because hormones decline. So this is very important to, so keep your, yourself active. This is the David, sorry, this is my fault. This, this is the David, if uh, normal David's picture, and when with the testosterone deficiency, there is a loss of hair, cardiac problem, belly fat, loss of muscle mass. So this will be the David after Adam. So this is the thing. There is, as you all know, this Adam questionnaire. There are ten questions. So one and seven, or any three of them. If you answer, though, that these are the signs that you are having a testosterone deficiency. There is a lot of lack of energy, loss of height, decreased enjoyment, but most important, one and three is decreased libido. Libido is basically the sex drive, which is biological, and whether the erections are less strong. This one and seven, or any three of them. Then there are certain things, even the question nine, if you see, are you falling asleep after dinner? <laughs> Everybody falls asleep after dinner. So, but again, this Adam questionnaire has been made long time back, and we always take whatever comes from the Western world as a gospel. So we have taken it and we are continuing it. This na question number nine always fascinates me. Are you falling after asleep after dinner? Everyone falls asleep after dinner. So menopause, yes, desire remains stable in most men, but it gradually decreases. And they say in a prolonged marriage and all, erections becomes less reliable, durable, and dependable. It requires more stimulations to achieve and sustain there is threat to the sense of masculinity to many, worry, anger, depression, frustration, low self-esteem and finally that leads to marital disharmony, disturbed interpersonal relationships. So as in healthcare workers or as a special interest in andrology, it is our job to teach the people. I always feel as a doctor, we are a preacher, we are the teacher. If we feel, if we don't broach upon this topic, no one will and our country will remain. As they say, there are a lot of sexologists all around the city, the, uh, they are earning just because they say it is an exploitation of the ignorant by the illiterate. So that's why I feel it is our job to encourage. The sexual changes in andropause reduce frequency of morning erections, erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, impaired ejaculatory and orgasmic function. As men age, they notice that their penis needs more stimulation to trigger ejaculation. Basically, cerebral stimuli is no longer enough for the erection in the later part of life. So aging also weakens the pelvic floor muscles whose contractions triggers an ejaculation. We as a neurologist were well aware about the importance of the pelvic floor muscles. When these muscles weaken, the seven dribbles out and orgasms may provide little pleasure. So decreased endurance and greater fatigue. There are certain studies I have mentioned. So these studies had involved 8,200 uh, women in UK, France, Finland, uh, Sweden, Norway. There's a postmenopausal 55 to 65 years of age and uh, with the partners, this almost more than 70% they avoided physical intimacy because of vulvovaginal atrophy. 
and there was decreased satisfaction following love making which is a more politically correct word for having sex so females 50% had a decreased satisfaction on the other hand males around 28% uh, the tw around 21% of the women started using local estrogen and uh, out of them almost 58% felt a relief. So there is an importance of using this estrogen and there's more than one third has reported to have an impro impro improved sex life. But the, the catch in this study, almost 73% female reported lack of information about VVA and that is vulvovaginal atrophy. So that brings our topic that it is our job to educate the people otherwise they, they will never come to know even in a countries like UK Finland France 73 percent female didn't know about this entity called vulvovaginal atrophy this is surprising this is another study called female study female experience of men's attitude basically perception of 293 women whose partner had ED participated in this studies experience decreased desire arousal orgasm and satisfaction after partners ED exhibited concern for their partner and felt responsible for providing reassurance Many experienced frustration, sense of inadequacy, self-blame, insecurity about their attractiveness. These are very common things. The old lady starts feeling and the moment the couple, they start drifting apart. And some felt cheated and sadness at the loss of intimacy. Almost all agreed that their quality of life was adversely affected. So female partners who use PDF5 experience better sex life. So pill a day keeps the doctor away. So now coming to our main couple pause, the midlife physical, psychological and relational changes affecting the sexual health of both members of the couple. Addressing the need without considering the potential impact on our contribution of the partner's health, the clinicians are not doing justice. Women's belief about the ED may influence whether their partners seek treatment. So the partner's role is very important. It is the cases where the partners felt about the ED, then those people come. At any age, the performance pressure is more on the male, obviously. This erectile dysfunction and the genitourinary symptoms of menopause induce abstinence. So this abstinence to avoid that continuation of sexual relationship is an important source of psychological reinforcement when either partner fear the loss of attractiveness and desirability and as well as the health changes. Couples sharing deep level of non-sexual intimacy felt sex had become something to be endured or avoided. Women whose partner had PD more often reported sexual distress. Majority felt that their partner's sexual problem did not interfere with their overall relationship. This patriarchal mindset prevents the Indian men from accepting aging gracefully. And not only India, it is world over. So it is the role of the women to take care of them, which includes convincing him as diplomatically as necessary to go for regular checkups, especially when he is approaching this andropausal stage. Again, as a survey of around 200 midlife couples, the persons was more likely to be sexually satisfied and happy in their relationship if their partner reported good health, good sexual functioning and happiness with the relationship. The, this thing was more in the case of males compared to the females. The women were more likely to believe there are ways to obtain sexual gratification that do not require good erection. But for the men, they always feel that the erection is the most important. That is the thing. But as I, we have to, that I will cover that symptoms in one partner may exacerbate the symptoms in the other. And they say it is becomes the symptoms become multiplicative rather than additive. That is the importance. This is another study, sexual English longitudinal study of aging. Sexual problems among older couple have negated the impact on their long-standing relationship with their partners or spouses. Despite issues with arousal and erection, men coped with acceptance and practiced alternate forms of intimacy like cuddling, caressing and all. The supportive nature of relationships often compensated for such difficulties. The buffering effect of the couples has been confirmed. This, this is called the buffering effect. So now the menopause, the, the diagnosis, andropause following diagnosis, this often causes a possible conflict. So the new paradigm which we are, uh, they have advocated is that menopause, andropause, in the common there is a couple pause. So if we do a common diagnosis and shared treatment, that will give the best result. The common, this is basically couple oriented approach. So collaborative management between the patient, which we usually don't use the patient, it is a, the, today's correct word is client, the primary client, 
the partner and the physicians. So the collaborative management is the key word. Now certain perspective, this, the studies we have done, we, we, I, am, I am constantly, I interview a lot of people. So there are a couple of things like uh, Mrs. T, 65 year old, she says, Ki, I do not want sexuality to be masked by medicines. I will accept each other as we are and we find the ways of being close rather than depend on pill for momentary pleasure. This is a certain group of ladies are speak like this. There is uh, there is certain who says it is wrong to say that I do not want to get aroused any further. However, his osteoarthritis causes pain, you know, making things difficult. This is another group of people. There is certain groups they say you really expect us to talk about sex and old man talking or old women talking about sexuality instead of spirituality. How will people around me think? This is another group of people give this sort of exercise. I keep on interviewing a lot of people. We are uh, collecting the data. Once I read that 2018 article, I started to do the same in India. And uh, there is another group, they said, my doctor was dismissive. She said, this age, I should go for pilgrimage and read scripture. Sexuality should be the last thing on my list. I, I felt offended, but you know, that's what our country, especially women in our society is expected to. And the last group, you do not say and they never ask. They say, no, you ask no question and you will be told no lies. So my diabetes and gouts were a greater problem. So I did not have a right to discuss sex at this age. So these are the couple of things which I have seen. Now female partner's perspective. These are on the lighter vein. <coughs> but they carry a lot of truth in it. Just to keep the thing, these are to drive home the points. They said that only reason I took up exercising so that I can hear the heavy breathing again. So now, again coming to the thing that partner, they are the best here. So taking history taking, clinical examination, management and all the aspect one should involve the partner and that's how it goes. Regardless of which partner present as the primary client, both are affected. And so each is critical to resolve it. Clinicians should provide with the advice for rebuilding their sex lives and relationship. Realistic expectation should be established. And spending more quality time together adding novelty to the sexual repertoire. The novelty is the thing. Couples should be encouraged to foster intimacy and eroticism and they should be introduced to the good enough sex model. This is Barry McCarthy's good enough sex model. It is giving and receiving pleasure. So basically outer course is more important than the intercourse. That is the thing. Sex is not an autonomous erection and individual intercourse performance. It is accept responsive desire. At a young age, people have a spontaneous desire. But as men and women, they grow, they ha have to accept the responsive desire. Aging sexuality is about challenge to integrate intimacy, pleasuring and eroticism. Though it is a different but complementary dimensions. And the sexual satisfaction is enhanced by both as both partners acknowledge the same desire, pleasure, eroticism. And there is a sexual grounding therapy. And finally, the core value is pleasure-oriented touching, which is a sunset focus. This is a way back in 70, Masters and Johnson had started the for sunset focus therapy, the importance of touch. And the touch has, even in our Upanishad, the importance of touch has been highlighted, that there are different forms of touch. One of our old professor in physiology, HOD physiology used to say, sex is nothing but who touches whom, who touches where, and who touches how. So that's it. There is a comfort touch. There are different types of touch. So, uh, in sunset focus therapy, in, especially used for the desired discrepancy, often as the couple they grow, grow the, as the marriage matures, desired de uh, wanes. So, in sunset focus therapy, initially, they just the partners have to touch. There is intercourse is totally prohibited. It is only the touching and excluding the breast, chest, and genitalia. Then in the second stage, gradually, those are involved. Then there is a non-pressure intercourse and then finally, the intercourse is allowed. So this way, the, in the desired discrepancy diminishes. So first, the touch. And in this, I have tried with certain couples and all by advising that after the first phase, you, if the one person who is giving, he has an open ear and the one who is receiving is blindfolded. There the thing, again, some surprise comes in and it improves the desire things. 
Now, this is this uh, article came in 2001. It is in UK, but you have there is something called orgasmic uh, orgasmic meditation. But you have to pay, as you say, this is a $147. That's quite a bit. But again, just for the knowledge, novelty factor. That is the most important novelty as regard to posture, position, place, and obviously the other things. I can't be there. So it is said that change. The novelty is the killer of the pleasure. So one has to broaden the couple's sexual repertoire, discover novel non-erection dependent pleasure techniques using sensual massage, mutual masturbation, sex toys, non-oil based lubricants which is very important, coital alignment techniques and so as it is said that skill is more important than the pills. This coital alignment technique is very uh, useful for the uh, ladies who are non-orgasmic. And uh, but if I cover all the topic, this sexual grounding theory and all, it will take a full presentation in itself. So we can keep it for some other time. For ultimately, as you, as a urologist, is all about P. So it is practice, perseverance, and uh, that is practice Kegels exercise. Kegels is very important for intensifying orgasm and strengthening ejaculation. The Kegels exercise should be encouraged then value your erotic content. After 50 years of age, the context becomes increasingly important. Identify optimal sexual situations for you and work with your partner for, for it. Value your own pleasure. You too deserve erotic uh, satisfaction. So you may need different types of stimulation. Ask for it. Communication is the key. <coughs> I have in my book, in the one for joy, I said in a relationship, most important is the trust. As a, as a doctor, we are used to making mnemonics. So trust. First, there should be transparency. Then R is for respect am amongst each other. Then understanding. S is a space. And then the finally time, touch and all. So that's how. Value your pleasure. Ask for it. And coach your partner. Show your partner exactly what works for you and coach your partner to provide it. So that is important. And breathe deeply. It relaxes the nervous system so that erotic stimulation can trigger orgasm and ejaculation. In orgasmic meditation, they teach this sort of breathing techniques and focus on fantasies, the real fantasies that have turned you on in the past. Elaborate on them. These days even you can, there are so many things available on the internet and all. Try them together. These are not for the younger couples but for the older couples but again for the younger couples also at times it works. And penovaginal intercourse has been seen to reflex, reflexive vaginal contraction. This has, is a good biofeedback for pelvic relaxation. So there comes the importance of penovaginal intercourse which gives a reflexive vaginal contraction. So one should not give, uh, stop it, uh, uh, should continue and use lubricant which I have already covered. So sex and the brain, besides all important, the older adults who retain interest in sex are doing their brain a favor. A study was done in Britain which showed that the older adults who remain sexually active score higher on the cognitive tests. It was found slightly more for the males than the females. It is seen that the dopamine and oxytocin may enhance the brain function by improved signaling between the brain regions. So this is the book I was mentioning the by Barry McCarthy, The Sex at 60. It's a couple sexuality after 60, re rekindling the desire. It's again a very good book. This, Barry McCarthy is the person who advocate, they advocate basically, Barry McCarthy, she advocates about this uh, good enough technique, good enough sex. Predictors of senior sex, the early life sexual activity. This is more important. The old, even American Urological Association have studied that the men Beyond 50, if they have ejaculation more than three times a week, their chances of getting high-grade CA prostate reduces by almost 33%. So, early life sexual activity, physical, psychological health of both the partners, availability, attitude and sex appetite of both the partners. Partners are indispensable source of information about sexual problems. Interesting and interested partner is the best aphrodisiac. Otherwise, there is no aphrodisiac as such. It is only... The secret to staying young is to live honestly, eat slowly and lie about your age. This is just on the lighter vein. It said that feel safe at night, sleep with a doctor. So to conclude, I must say that sexuality and aging is an adventure. Schedule it in your lifestyle. It might sound silly, but believe you me, you have to schedule it. But as the life progresses, at the younger age, it is just you get a time, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. But as you grow old, it is, you have to schedule it. Because keeping in view of the importance, right? 
and it aren't over. It is just an old game with new rules. Embrace the new normal. This is a variable, flexible couple sexuality. All of you are using flexible uretroscope and all. So now it is a flexible couple sexuality. Couple pause paradigm would help both the partners dramatically. Clients are often reticent to open such discussions. So it is our job. Physicians must broach upon the topic with simple open-ended questions and gradually you have to develop. It is very difficult to develop a proper communication. That's, that's the key to the whole thing. And physicians who feel innovated to treat such couples due to time, religious, cultural constants, humble requests, they must refer to a qualified andrologist with a passion for such problems. So sexuality, as they say, is what is between the ears and not what is between the legs. It is often have a unique personal relevance to each participant. The study has shown, it is not my, it is adequately, it has world over, it has been shown. So that's how you must take home message is this. And I am a paratrooper myself, so I always show this slide. Being in army, I have, I have done para jumps. To end, I have, that this is a saying by Osho. Orgasms are important or else individual will know, will not know when to stop the act. Thank you. For so now it's the houses for the Sipla to open the champagne. Thank you, Dr. Nand Thank you, Dr. Nandi. Uh, for this out of the box topic. Uh, now, before uh, dinner is being served, I invite Dr. Krishna Bodhan, sir, our senior member of Bengal Society, to deliver a talk on evolution of human sexual behavior. Thank you. to allow me to talk few minutes. Uh, today we are here, uh, everybody from my age to uh, my uh, grandchildren age because of human sexual behavior. If it was not there, we would not be human beings, won't be uh, on earth. So the human sexual the sexual behavior of any species is primarily for, for procreation and propagation of life on earth. The propagation of life from one generation to successive generation is going on by conjugation process since life was established on earth. For this, the Hindu and Buddhist community believe in rebirth. We reborn through our children because they carry the half-life of father and mother. This process is one of the characters of living species, whether animal or plant. This may be sexual or asexual. In the evolution of species from the lower to higher, reproductive sexual behavior was only for procreation and not for recreation. In reproductive sex, the male genetic materials for reproduction is transferred into the female body by sexual union to unite male and uh, to unite the female genetic materials. This process lasts for few seconds to few minutes, which varies from species to species. During evolution below the level of apes or primates, there is no recreation during sexual act. Recreation was added during the sexual act from apes onwards. Uh, to human being. In recreational sex, there is no intention of procreation. Recreation from sexual act can be achieved by self, homo, or heterosexual act. In the beginning of evolution, life came to existence in the unicellular form, that is amoeba in sea water. From this stage, the propagation of life started by binary fission, one to two, two to four, then multicellular species by, uh, came into existence. In this propagation of life occurred by splitting. The whole body splits into two identical species. 
there was no male or female reproductive organ in this species like hydra in the next stage both male and female reproductive system was developed inside the same species like arthwan mythologically ardha narishwar is the only god of our 33 crores of gods and goddesses of hindu religion where both sexes exist in single body from the stage of separation male and female germ cells containing haploid number of chromosomes with x for female y for male species are developed into separate separately male and female bodies depending on the type of germ cells present inside the body due to different physical body character un, character union of male and female bodies was required to reproduction in this process the male genetic material that is uh, in semen is introduced into the female body by an organ called penis which works as a syringe to unite with the ovum in female this process lasts few second to few minutes depending on the species which i have ma already mentioned below the level of the apes there is no recreation during pro this process from apes to human beings recreation in the form of orgasm was added during sexual conjugation which is also called lust which uh, dr nondi has explained species below the apes do not conjugate any other time except when they want to reproduce a particular uh, reproduce in a particular time as there is no recreation human and apes conjugate not only for procreation but most of the time for recreation this is the root cause of sexual aberrations and crimes this does not depend on the sexuality of the individual whether male female or transversite this is because it is introduced into the memory of the cells of the sex center of the brain sexual practices like homosexuality extramarital love sexual crimes like rape molestation child sexual abuse and sex related murder sex change due and are due to the addition of recreation during sexual act both male and female young and old have this intention to perform during this act there is there is no intention of procreation but only recreation as this added sexual behavior for orgasm introduced into the cell memory of the sex cell of the brain cannot be deleted from the human brain so this behavior can be stop cannot be stopped by punishment whether physical or corporeal even by death sentence this needs proper sex education from the adolescent to the childhood which i call 1 2 2 1 this is the very vital vital uh, uh, age group uh, the children these are uh, uh, these children should be taught properly about the sex and what's its necessity this educative process should start not only by the parents at home but also by teachers in the schools so that they get proper information and guidance they should be taught to respect the opposite sex of any relation in the family and society they should know clearly how they have come on this earth by reproductive sexual act of the parents which they will also follow the same act when they will become adults to produce the next generation although recreation say recreational sex is intimately related with the reproductive sex but always this physical union of sex organism so uh, sex organs is not mandatory in modern biological science reproductive uh, biology this is possible the, the reproduction is possible without physical union like ivf Uh, intravaginal inoculation of husband or donor semen similarly sexual recreation and orgasm can be achieved 
without an opposite partner, male or female. One can achieve orgasm by friction action with hand, finger or artifact, which Dr. Nondi has mentioned, now it is available in the market, with coordinated, uh, uh, coordinated with the sex center of the brain through the five sense organ of the body. This process is called masturbation. This masturbation, the sexual relaxation or the lust is the same as uh, 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 sexual uh, 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 um, uh, um, uh, without a partner. It is the same thing, same, same sort of uh, your enjoyment, recreation. So there is no difference between a heterosexual sex or masturbation. And uh, one of the individual, one, one of the, the individual learn, learn how to achieve the self-orgasm, then the, once they are, uh, the, then the requirement of opposite partner will not be required. This will reduce the incidence of sexual crimes and sexual aberrations like homosexuality, lesbianism, prostitution, extramarital affairs, transvasites in the society. Once this is achieved by individual in the society, then probably we don't have to read all the sex-related crimes, uh, news, crime news every morning in the newspaper. No punishment, physical or corporate, will, uh, 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 capital, will be able to reduce all these sexual crimes unless proper information and knowledge and guidance regarding sex are provided to each individual from childhood. Only then, no new law has to be introduced to legalize gay marriage or capital punishment for rape. Thank you. I think uh, this will give a clear idea to the parents what they will teach their children about the sex education. I think because India is the country in the world before Christ that India we have given this Kam Sutra and also all the, all the sculptures in Khajura or Konarok, those are nothing but for the sex education. India is the only country who introduced sex education in the world first. And I think if we can do that, every day we have to see these all sexual crimes. It is the, I, I, what I say, it is the parents who are responsible. They are not giving proper information to the children. And then they should get from the school. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Pradhan, for such an enlightening talk. Now that the business end of the evening has come to an end, we shall now proceed for the entertainment. Thank you.